Welcome to Kuwait's Industrial Automation and Control Systems Cybersecurity Conference, KIAX Cybersecurity 2014, 25 through 26 May 2014. Hosted and organized by Equait Petrochemical Company in partnership with KPC. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back from your lunch period. Delighted to have so many of you with us. Would you kindly take your seats and we are going to begin. Gentlemen, kindly take your seats. So ladies and gentlemen, just a quick reminder of some housekeeping. If we could ask you all to switch your mobiles onto silent. Do remember that there is no smoking in the ballroom, but there are provisions made for you out of the main doors to the left, a nice shaded tent area. Remember, for questions and answers, we ask you to raise your hand and state your name, your company, and just your question. And finally, do remember that this afternoon at 5.15, there are gonna be three of you automatically that get drawn to win an iPhone or an iPad. But of course, the rules are, you've got to be here. You've got to be present. So do ensure you remain with us this afternoon. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I am delighted to introduce our third session of the day. And this is with Iyad al Qadri, who is Vertical Sales Manager for the Oil and Gas at Cisco. Today, he's going to be talking about Cisco Secure Ops for ICS. Now, in Iman's, in Iyad's work um, with uh, Cisco Systems, um, he is focused on the oil and gas industry and working with some of the biggest companies um, across the Middle East and Africa. So, ladies and gentlemen, do, well, war, do join me in warmly welcoming to the stage Iyad El Khadi. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. All yours. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. I hope you can all hear me well. Okay. I know it's very difficult uh, to present right after lunch. I'm sure you guys had enjoyed lunch. So uh, very often uh, I get asked the question, what is Cisco doing in terms of uh, process control environments? Uh, you know, we're not really traditionally known as a company that plays a major part in the process control or SCADA or DCS, and that's been the the challenge over the last 10, 15 years. And quite honest with you, the story starts pretty much about 10 years ago with, with one of the largest uh, international oil companies uh, coming to Cisco and asking about what does Cisco offer in terms of security solutions. Uh, and really to share with the, with the customer at the time our product, our technology, and how we approach security. At the time, you know, we came in and we talked a little bit more about our traditional IT security, the firewalls, the architecture that we promote and position. And after almost one hour of a presentation, you know, the CIO looked at Cisco representative and said, that's not what we're looking for. What we were really interested in is more about does Cisco play a major role in terms of securing SCADA systems and DCS, industrial control systems, everything outside corporate IT. And quite honest with you, at the time, we did not really have a strong solution or a strong product. So what I'm about to share with you today is, frankly, it's a work that's been done over the last 10 to 12 years, and actually responding to the same customer, which recently, uh, and it's, frankly, it's hot off the press, we just introduced a solution called Cisco Secure Operations. And this particular solution is really designed to address not just IT, but also the process control environments. And this, actually, the solution will be rolled out across uh, one of the, it's a global rollout, and it will actually touch all the remote sites along with the central location for our headquarter office for this large oil and gas company. I truly believe, personally, technology alone does not address this issue but it really requires more of a framework. And this is really what I'm hoping to share with you more about some of the best practices. And this best practice really brought both IT and OT together. If we go back to the automation industry, it's completely different than IT. 
you know, very often these, imp these networks pretty much were installed, you know, 20, 50, 40, 30 years, 10 years ago. And it, quite honestly, they've extremely been very reliable infrastructure. And very often they were pretty much segregated and completely independent. They ran on their own. They did not have to be connected to anything in terms of the corporate office. And to a degree, they were extremely very reliable networks. Over the last 10, 15 years, that things has changed. We start seeing more and more business on the business side demanding access to these networks. New applications have come up, mobility. You know, we hear of the internet. You hear about iPad, iPhones, etc. So many devices, even sensors by automation vendors, are demanding even, you know, different access and different visibility into these networks. And that's to a degree had introduced a lot of risk you know, security and other areas as well. Studies and research has been actually based on the DHS, Department of Homeland Security report that was done in 2013. The oil and gas or the energy industry, power oil and gas and utilities, pretty much active has been the target for most of the attacks, at least in the US. You know, we've seen quite a bit of activities here in the region in the last three, four years. And more actually, more awareness already been, you know, created in this region, especially in the Gulf region and Africa, around securing these infrastructures. And quite honestly, with you, that's been really actually good for, you know, for everybody, because at the end of the day, people are becoming more and more aware, you know, security or securing a critical infrastructure for an oil and gas or for a country becomes extremely important. Very often these attacks, on the other hand, you know, while in sometimes these attacks take, you know, possibly hours, they could, I mean, some of these viruses could be actually months in the network before they get discovered. So if you take a look at the, at the statistics that's been grown, very often we see quite a bit of these attacks, you know, and again, some of the, some of the statistics around Stuxnet actually states that the, you know, the virus itself was pretty much implanted in the network for months before it even got discovered. Also, some research had indicated some of these hackers, they are motivated. And as a result of being motivated, some of them, some numbers actually have been thrown that they could even make as much as $50,000 per day to hack into a network. So there is actually not just only motivated by ego, but also motivated by money. Now, if you take a look at the, traditionally, the process control network, as I said, it was pretty much isolated network, not connected whatsoever. Even till today, some networks in this region, they're still actually isolated even to the, you know, we hear very often from the CIO coming to Cisco and say, you know, we need to have visibility into these networks, but for some reason, our CEO, because of these incidents, because of these problems that's happening in the region, pretty much have instructed us there is no remote access to these networks. As a result, the business requirement also, it's really changing the whole platform. And you see more and more applications. You know, you also hear about, you know, around 50 billion, you know, device will be connected to the internet by 2020. There is also more and more automation product, automation product that are actually being offered today over wireless infrastructure and they are supported across these SCADA systems. So not only you have application that actually demand visibility into these networks, but also we start seeing more of these viruses and more of these attacks. It is at the end of the day when you, talk, when you look at an IT network or a, an IT system, confidentiality remains the big number issue priority for any CIOs. But on the other hand, the process control network, it's all about availability, making sure that system is on 24 by 7 by 365. For that particular reason, you see more often hackers are motivated to bring down a pipeline because they know a pipeline could definitely impact a country economy, not just the company itself. It could literally actually bring and could potentially cost millions of dollars worth of losses. It is true an IT system when it goes down, it does cause a huge financial loss, but at the end of the day, it's not gonna be as much damaging as, it, as if it would be for a process control systems. 
So you take a look at the two characteristics of the systems between IT and the process control, they're both to a degree act completely different. Now, a company like Cisco has been always known for connecting people and organizations and governments and countries. And we see quite a bit more and more today from the TC, more and more from process control networks are moving towards what we call the TCP IP or Ethernet type like interfaces. As a result, more CIOs today are being asked by their CEOs or by their chief security officer, what are you doing about securing these process control networks? As a result of this, the systems are coming together. Yeah, we could argue about, you know, we need to have a create what we call a DMZ or a buffer zone between the two networks. There's no direct communication between the two networks, but overall, there is visibility and there is a need for these two, two networks to communicate. How we do that, there are also many, many standards out that actually prevent us and allow us to do exactly that. Security in general, based on what we have done, and again, this is a true example based on exact you know, customer requirement, where we have set and built a framework just to make sure we, you know, we have a clear understanding of this requirement. We approach this much more of a, pro a program and a framework. And for that reason, information security, it's all about managing risk. Not only you have to create a firewall or build or implement the firewalls across your network, but it's really important that you have created a strategy and a framework where you're planning and then you act immediately when there is potentially a problem to even do a revalidation of your system to eventually you know, act again if there's anything needs to be modified. So we follow what we call a framework based on risk control of these process control infrastructures. And it starts with before attack takes place because an attack is a continuum activity. It's not like a one-time activity. It's gonna be a continuum and sometimes it could last months within your, within your network. So you must have you know, you know, a strategy in terms of how to respond to an attack before it happens. You need to build a strategy based on, you know, whenever the attack will take place because it will take place. And what do you do when, during the attack takes place? And also, what do you do after the attack takes place? So, and the concept here is really about before and during and after. And really, it's this framework, based on this framework, two companies have come together based on the customer requirement, and the customer actually asked Cisco and one of the companies, the automation vendors, Yukugawa Electric, to come together and design a solution just to address their particular requirement. What makes this solution unique, in my opinion, and the customers also, is these two companies is built, you know, making sure the IT company and also the process control or automation vendor are collaborating. It's very often when we go do an assessment on networks like this, we very often find that there are so many devices in these networks from multiple vendors, which makes it extremely difficult for a customer or even for a vendor to really create a security strategy. As a result, and this is based on the lessons have learned, this company actually brought the two vendors together, the IT and the automation vendor, and asked them to really create a framework that will address security, not just in IT, but also in the process control. So we've developed what we call a Cisco Secure Operations for, for Shell Oil. I'm, 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 really, I'm, you know, I'm happy to share with you the name of the customer because this was actually announced last week by the CIO of Shell. So this particular example, it addresses both IT and OT, or operation technology. And it, it focuses pretty much on creating a blueprint to support the cyber security risk management for industrial control systems. It's actually not just a technology, but it also focuses on the process and the people and the tools. And it brings, and with the create, what we create what we call a service level agreement between the Cisco, the customer, and Yukugawa Electric. And it's important to rely to also mention this solution actually been adopted currently by other automation vendors. And we're currently working with many others, including Rockwell, Honeywell, and others, to hopefully replicate the same type of solutions as well. 
So there are many work has been done in the background between the IT and OT vendors. What's important about this solution, why is it so critical focus on, it's really making sure the system is highly available. And that's really important. It's important to that the customer create a criteria in terms of what is it for the customer, what's the most critical for them if the system gets attacked. What is how many downtime they could afford. So based on this service level agreement that was created, this solution was built and itemized and actually rolled out across various sites across the globe. It clearly actually, the, the solution itself could be managed centrally as well as it will be managed remotely. So at some of the remote sites, there will be various product, hardware and, and, and software will be actually rolled out and across these sites. And it will be actually managed through Cisco, working in the background between Cisco and Yukigawa. And it's really important for this because very often when there is an incident that takes place, and we've seen it frankly in the past, a customer pretty much goes into a panic situation and eventually start calling multiple vendors. And you bring them together while you still, the, you know, while still possibly the hacking is taking place as you speak. And you're trying to really, to really to build or create a strategy to respond to this attack. In this particular case, the Cisco engineers and Yukugawa engineers are working hand in hand in the background to make sure they are responding to the incident as it takes place and before it takes place, including even patching. So if there is a software that needs to be updated or rolled out, we do the testing in the background before it gets rolled out. So that's really important as well. So that at the end of the day, the site or a live site is not getting impacted. So we do the patching, and that's really important to collaborate between the two vendors. So on, on one side, we provide what we call on-premises site configuration. This is part of, part of the system that will be rolled out. And it's really important in this particular example, we focus on making sure the business requirement for Shell is met. And the key thing for Shell in this particular example, example is making sure from a health, safety, and security issues, there are no damage whatsoever for these sites. Now, of course, there is no 100% guarantee that these networks will not be impacted or attacked. However, there is a clear criteria and clear, clear you know, set of criteria in terms of that need to be met under an SLA. And what's the, what brings the confidence to, to the customers like Shell is the fact that two vendors are working closely together. And the key benefits overall is to reduce the overall unplanned outages. That's really important. So at the end of the day, also, the customer does not become you know, a test or a lab test for you know, vendors. Software rolled out, any bugs, any fixes need to be done. It's done, tested completely in the labs before it gets rolled out. It's less downtime, less and reducing the overall risk. It also focuses on increasing the site productivity, having the engineers work on different aspects within their network when there is an incident that takes place. And it is future-proof because this is really what gives the customer the assurance or at least gives the customer the comfort having the two players or two vendors are working closely together. Overall, it is really a flexible model. It's really, again, it's based on technology, hardware, as well as software. It's also based on really sharing some of the best practices. It's more important, it is site deployed, so you'll have a site based on the each site, based on each site requirement will be deployed per site and also at the global level. And it's really a service level, so it's rather it's managed services rolled out. So you have service engineers and security specialists are actually working in the background, you know, responding to any possible threat or possible attack. As I said, it's really, it's more of a program, it's based on the technology, the service and the commercial. And the commercial element of this is really flexible. So it's really based on the specific customer requirement. And it can very well be modified with clear element of ownership. So there is a clear ownership, you know, clearly identified for Shell for in this particular example as to what Cisco owns and does and responsible for, what is also Yukugawa. And all this been actually negotiated with the customer beforehand and before it gets rolled out. Overall, this solution 
it really covers what's really important, the fact it's before and during and after. So again, we're, we're not talking about throwing out firewalls, whether it's an industrial firewall or just an IT firewall. But it's rather more trying to make sure that you have a system and you have a process and you have a policy and you have also a framework that actually handles and addresses any possible attack or possible threat to your life network before and during and after. And this is really very, based on, the, based on what we have seen, it's extremely one of the most important things. That's all I have. Thank you so much. I'm not sure if I have any. Yeah, sure. Any questions? So, ladies and gentlemen, delighted to open the floor for some questions. I can see one down the back here. Um, if you can state your name, your company, and just your question, please, sir. Hello. Ibrahim Said Alif, G Oil and Gas, um, uh, Cybersecurity and Integration Team Leader for the MINAD. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, first of all, uh, when you're presenting this uh, solution from Cisco, does it mean that uh, Cisco had developed uh, something other than commercial model, some new hardware? Because um, I'm, as a technical person, when I'm looking for uh, Cisco firewalls and industrial firewalls, I can find nothing, basically. Or was something developed for that, for that solution? Cisco actually uh, does have industrial firewall, will be actually launched very soon. Okay. okay, and they will have SCADA uh, signatures. Uh, so that is actually uh, in the, it's expected to come out very, very soon. All right, so I, I, w I was right, and, and thank you for And for we do sense. also, we do provide, you know, again, I did not really wanna, I'm not here really to position or to sell you a product, but we do offer the solution. I wanted really frankly to share with you some of the best practices been adopted by one of the large oil companies. Uh, but we do have the industrial firewall or ruggedized firewall. And we also have you know, uh, various applications as well that will be do uh, rolled out as well. All right, and that, that's great news. And uh, I'm glad that you said something about the SCADA signatures. Are you going to go the same way as Tofino is going to create a, a smaller firewalls? Because uh, when we see the, uh, the commodity IT firewalls, they have millions of uh, input-output operations per second. But uh, Typically, automation systems in SCADA do not require that. We prefer to have uh, more secure, less protocols allowed, uh, ruggedized, uh, cheap, and very, very reliable equipment. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Mohamed uh, Saeed, Saudi Aramco. Thank you uh, for your excellent presentation. My question, uh, after you elaborated about your collaboration with Yokogawa, is a good uh, example of uh, having uh, the leader in IT working with the leader like Yokogawa in the process control and systems like SCADA together to secure the plans. But the question, uh, is Cisco looking for other vendors as well to have that uh, good uh, collaborated solution in terms of security? Yes. Uh, and second, where is the plant uh, in this circular? Is it only between IT vendor and DCS vendor or control systems vendors? Or oil and gas companies should participate in the loop in order to complete the, the full uh, three beads and one T or B and T? A process and technology. What you showed us is mainly technology, right? Yeah. And maybe the process in such examples there. But uh, also the governance, the standards, how we can collaborate as an oil and gas company with you as an IT and DCS together to cover all the control systems uh, okay. to be secured. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much. I think that's a really a very good question. Quite honestly, when addressing security, let me, I mean, again, I represent Cisco, but I'm not here to sell you product. I just want to make sure that's clear. Addressing security, it's all about collaboration and cooperation between multiple players, including vendors, including government, including customers. In this particular example, uh, 
it was actually Shell asking Cisco and Yokogawa to come together. That's really important because you know technology is shifting towards TCP/IP. You know Cisco is very solid and strong in that you know in the IP infrastructure or IP networks, and also Yokogawa as well as you know moving towards TCP/IP as well. So it was an this system was really, or this program, I should say, it, it was designed with the customer in mind. So we, you know, we had to sit for over a year and a half with the customer to go through various, you know, various sessions in terms of understanding the requirements and make sure we have clear, because it's really, at the end of the day, it's based on an SLA. Now, when it comes to you know, working with governments, yes, Cisco is very active and member and works very closely with various governments in terms of really uh, you know, educating, advising, etc., and also creating more of like a, a platform how to secure. What's really important also about security, which all of us had found, it's also, you know, it's not something that we need to hold back to our chest because it's really important to communicate and to share. And there, even to some degree in, in other countries now, we, and even in the GCC, we start seeing more the bodies that you have to share with others across the region when there is an attack takes place. So it's no longer just you have to deal with it yourself, but you need to really pick up the phone, call, and let them know others, you know, when an attack takes place or before it takes place. So it, it, and frankly, not Cisco, not Yukugawa, not one, you know, everybody has to come and work together to really address this problem because it's a continuous, and there is no silver bullets here. You know, you're not gonna get a solution from one vendor. I have not seen that at all. Uh, it's all about making sure it's cooperation and collaboration between others as well. And hopefully I addressed your question. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for Iyad al -Khadi. Thank you very much. <laughs> Vertical sales manager at Cisco. Great stuff. Thank you, Iyad. Hosted and organized by Equate Petrochemical Company in partnership with KPC.